Hello, everybody. It's Keith. Help support the Northeast scene and declare yourself a member today. Subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts or your podcast medium of choice. Rate us and leave a review. Every little bit helps. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. It has every podcast episode plus other exclusive content. Like and leave a comment. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the Scene. Also, continue to write us at northeastscene at gmail.com. We want to share your experiences as well. And now, here's the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Northeast Scene Podcast. This is Keith. And Tommy. Before the show, we were laughing because Tommy asked me how I was doing. And I took like 10 seconds to pause and think about it before I answered. So he's like, oh, no, something's going on. But I'm just so neurotic. Here's everything that went through my mind before I answered. Should I tell him how I'm doing now or should I do it on the show? Am I doing well? What if I tell him now and then on the show when I'm saying it, it's boring and it's not as good as when I told him when the show is not recorded? Like, and then I was like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I, I really wish that, like, in my head, I'm going like, I, when you, because you do that a lot. When I ask you, like, normal, like, everyday, like, hey, Keith, how are you? And, you know, pleasantry kind of shit, right? Yeah. You legitimately think about it where I'm just yeah. like, yeah, I'm good. Like, even if I'm not, like, I just, I, I, I don't want to have a conversation. So I'm just like, yeah, okay, I, I'm good. Yeah, I, I can't complain. Like, that kind of shit. Like, but you legitimately think about it. And it, it, I, I wish he was exaggerating when he said it was 10 seconds. It was a <laughs> full 10 count where I'm like, did I, did I lose contact with him? Is, it, or, is the mic not on? Like, what, what's happening right now? <laughs> it's really you just like thinking about it. And you came back with three words. Yeah, I'm fine. All right. <laughs> I, I had to really think about it. And you know what? I am fine, and I'm going to detail all the reasons why. So, we don't have a guest tonight. I thought we had a guest, but I was mistaken. Uh, ho- I think it's still in the works. And you know what? In showbiz, that happens. Uh, people got to shift schedules around. There's communication mishaps. It happens. And the great thing is, even if we don't have a top-tier musical guest, we have a show within a show where we can talk to each other and annoy all of you. <laughs> i was gonna say i still go back to the fact that people think that they're like oh that's one of those comments that comes up is like they have good chemistry i'm like really like it's really just us shooting the shit like it's just us talking and it's like i never think of that as something that anybody else would want to spend time listening to but apparently well, don't, like, don't give them any ideas no, no i'm just you, kidding <laughs> no it's funny I, I know you don't watch the show but um i'm a big fan of uh it's always sunny in philadelphia Yes. And they, they do an episode about podcasting. Yes. A- and it's really funny in that, like, they try to have, like, he, the, you know, the one of the characters, Danny DeVito's character, is just recording two of the characters talking. And mm-hmm. he was like, why the, why are you recording us? Like, he's like, oh, because you guys have good jib jab. You guys talk really well. I like that. And I listen to it in the car when I'm by myself. And I keep, <laughs> I keep thinking about that. Like, <laughs> when we're on the show, I'm like, do we have good jib jab? Do we, do we keep people somewhat entertained? And it's funny because like, people will text, like write us and say like, hey, I really like the way you guys, I, like the feedback about the show that's just you and I. Like, really? Like, I was thought we'd get stuff about Anthony, which we do. But Yeah, like, but we can't just talk about Anthony. And you know what? We got to talk to each other. And because we have good jib jab <laughs> is why this show works. All right, so that's a good segue. I have some big show news. Are you ready for this? Yeah, let's go. Some of you have already seen. However, it's time to announce to everybody. We have exceeded 10,000 downloads of this podcast. Can you believe that? Not really. It's still (laughs) kind of crazy to me that we do this every week. (laughs) Yeah, I still kind of like every once in a while i'm like shit like because this is the 50th episode yes we're almost a year deep like 52 weeks is a year we're really getting very close to that one year anniversary and it's like 
It's fucking insane, dude. It's still crazy to me. It is. And 50 is a special number. It's nice and even, and it's, it's divisible by five, so I like that. But, yeah, we have a, just just as a heads up, we have a special anniversary extravaganza show planned with uh, some new guests and old guests. It's going to be exciting. Don't miss it. And let me cue up some heroic music here. Now, when we started this podcast, we had no idea what we were doing. We didn't know how to record a podcast. We didn't know how often it was going to air. You know, I was thinking like once every couple months or something. And we've mentioned it before, but one of the benefits in regards to this show, one of the benefits of the virus is we figured out how to record this thing remotely and we can do it weekly now and it was scary because i thought no one was going to listen i thought maybe five people would listen to each episode and that's it and that hasn't been the case we are we have far exceeded 10,000 downloads of the show at this point we have a dedicated fan base we've had so many great guests so many discussions so many great discussions and I'm just really happy with the way th- everything has turned out. I'm looking at, I look at the map of all the countries we are heard in, Tommy, and almost the whole thing is lit up. You know, we're in Argentina, Chile, uh, Jamaica, all over the place. So to all of our official members and to anyone who has supported us, anyone who listens to us from the bottom of our hearts, we thank you for sticking with us on this journey. Wouldn't it be funny if we found out like N-E scene translates to something else in other languages and people were like only downloading it because they thought it was like, I don't know, about foot porn or something like that. And they're like, dude, (laughs) they got it, started listening to it. They're like, what the fuck is this? (laughs) You know what was a funny revelation with last week with Vadim? He said he edited our episode. That's a great racket. I would love, I'm going to do a podcast where I have the guest edit it so I don't have to do it you know it was really funny is you actually said we figured out how to do this podcast and how to record it and how to do all this stuff and keith knows how to do that i i don't i don't know how to do any of this (laughs) if i die you're screwed because (laughs) i I gave you like all the logins and passwords and everything but you'd have to figure out how to record edit uh generate the youtube video all that stuff no i wouldn't do it without you i would just (laughs) this dies with you or me. Well, you can go on without me afterwards because you know how to do stuff. You can start Northeast Scene Two. Yeah, any two, any um, two breaking a you know electric boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm just really happy with the way the show is going, and yeah, you know, one there's going to be a lot more fanfare for the anniversary episode, so I don't want to go too deep, but yeah, I'm just going to leave it there. I'm happy. There we go. I'm happy yeah. with the way things are going. Are you, dude? This is one of the most consistent things throughout this pandemic that has made me happy yes um so it's it's something i always want to make sure that is part of our friendship i think it's a a, another thing is this that we we've said this before on here but when we first made this we were like okay if we ever get into an argument about this shit we got to talk like for real like we can't have a fight about this and then not be friends anymore because we are friends before this thing we're going to be friends after this thing also it would be so lame to fight over a podcast I if know. it was like a girl or a band or a business. <laughs> I, I was actually thinking about this the other day with Kelly because she was talking about something, um, a, a ba- like a, not a band, like a, a pop star person on TV. And I didn't know who it was. And she's like, oh, I don't know who that is either. And I keep keep waiting for that guest of like somebody goes, hey, you guys really like insert band name that's really important and then i go oh yeah and in my head i'm going i don't fucking know any of their songs <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like somebody brought up i saw a lot of stuff that sunny posted on hate five six it was like if you're a big glass jaw fan and i was just like scroll i don't i never liked them so like in my head i'm going like when we get people on here that are from the other bands i'm always like please don't mention bands i don't know anything about or you know what was the one band that I was thinking of? And I was like, I know they're super popular and it's, it's not that I didn't like them. It was just like, it just didn't resonate with me the same way. Kid dynamite. I I like that band, but I like lifetime way better. Yeah. I loved 
both of them, Kid Dynamite especially. I don't really listen to them anymore. It's just it's just not really in my rotation anymore. But I yeah. really I really loved both of the Glassjaw I really had a time with too. They were heavily, heavily in my rotation, but just just not really anymore. And yeah, I'm I'm like you. There's there's a lot of bands I haven't I just haven't heard because I mm-hmm. just wouldn't listen to a lot of stuff just, you know, because of my nasty attitude, which we've mentioned on here before. <laughs> And there's a lot of stuff I like. I just don't really listen to anymore. I got no problem with it. But I want to. I want to talk to everybody. I mean, I even if I don't like a band, I would still want to talk to them if I think they have a compelling story. Oh my god, dude! I, I can think of like tons of bands that you may or may not think about this. Like we had an excellent, amazing conversation with Phil from Caspian, right? Yes. Some people might have listened to that and been like, I've never heard Caspian before, but that was still a fucking great show, man. There was times where I used to listen to Stern or Opie and Anthony and I would hear a guest on there. I'm like, I don't know who this is, but they're funny as shit or like what they're, the stories they're telling are great. Exactly. Stern is perfect for that. And that's how I imagine this show. Like Stern has a lot of artists on musicians that I don't care about. And I would always be like, man, I wish Stern could have like Caspian on. Imagine the interview he would get out of them. And that's kind of what we're doing, or what I'm trying to do, at least. You can make an attempt at it, at least. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I want those in-depth conversations with bands I really care about. And you know what? That's what we're doing. Yeah, and, and 50 episodes deep, here we are. That's right. And we've got some special things planned for this show. Uh, I've done another song parody Oh, we're gonna gosh. be we're gonna be debuting that a little later in the show, so strap in for that. And <laughs> Tommy, this is a major production. It's it's a I, minute and six <laughs> seconds long, and I I spent a lot of time putting this thing together. No, that doesn't sound like you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I did? Uh, you know what I did? I recorded it, and I was like, okay, I'm not gonna do my whole thing where I obsess. And then re-record it, and then re-record it. It's just a song parody. It's no big deal. And guess what happened? How many iterations are we on now? This is the third recording of it. Fourth. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so I just have no. to. Oh, ac- yeah. <laughs> no. So I just have to accept that I'm going to do things four or five times until they're perfect in my mind or close to. So that's coming a little later. What, what's going on with you? Uh, how's how's your week going? So far, so good. Uh, This is a very, very short week for me. Tomorrow is my last day for this week. Um, It's a really long day. It's parent-teacher conferences. So we have a half day. Kids are done at noon. And then from noon until 7.30, I have conferences. Are those going to be a pain? um, No. For the most part, uh, because of virtual learning, parents have online portals they can log into and they can see their kids' grades day by day. So nothing is really a big surprise when they get their grades. They also get weekly updates. Like we email them their grades every week. So parents are aware of what their grades are like. It's the unfortunate part of this is the end of the second marking period. You have to have those retention conversations. Yes. Of you are not passing multiple classes or, you know, uh, unfortunately, there's some kids that are getting really close with just how many days of school they've missed. And they've missed so many days at this point. Legally, we have to retain them. But I don't know what's going to go on with any of that kind of stuff because I'm sure there's going to be exceptions that are made um, because there's a lot of different things going on. You know, people have had COVID. Kids have had serious internet issues. Kids have had um, family crisis things going on. And uh, so we'll see what that looks like in the long term. But right now... I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. I get to talk with the parents, which is really nice because a lot of the times um, this is my only interaction with them. Normally uh, I'm the person outside at school that directs traffic and helps the kids get in their car. Wait, wait, like during, during parent teacher conferences, you're outside. Wait, what are you talking about? During like dismissal. Oh, like every day. So every day you're directing traffic. Yeah. What? Yeah. We've never talked about this? Yeah, so I am the backyard person. Like I'm in a I have a like you know walkie-talkie app on my phone and me and four other people are stationed around the the property 
and we direct people where to go. We help kids get in cars, especially when you have the little kids getting out there and like their parents have a big truck or a van or something like that, helping them get in. They make and teachers do that? Yeah. Do you have yeah, a problem with that? No. Do you, do you feel I, I like actually, you shouldn't be doing that? I miss it a lot. I don't miss it when it's 10 degrees below zero outside and the parking lot is freezing. I don't miss this time yeah. of year. Um, but I do really miss, I get to talk to a lot of the parents, especially of like the kids I don't actually teach, like parents that just see me in the parking lot and they're like, I interact with so many parents in the afternoon when they come for parent teacher conferences. A lot of the times for the first marking period, when I'm meeting parents for the first time or back to school night, they're like, oh my God, you're the guy from the parking lot. I'm like, oh yeah. Hey, how you doing, Mrs. So-and-so? Like it's, it's really nice. I miss that. Don't you feel that if the parent sees that the guy from the parking lot is teaching their kid, they'll feel they're getting the uh, short end of the stick? <laughs> no, I don't <laughs> think so. The only thing, if you, going back to your other question, maybe if you're like, do you feel like, uh, like, do I get mad that I'm out in the parking lot? And he, here's the only reason I don't. They give us like extra stuff for being outside. So for example, I got a really nice winter coat that says my school's name on it. Um, I got a really, really expensive, not really expensive, a very nicely made umbrella that has my school logo on it. So for days when it's raining, um, you know, it's, there's Are you going to eBay of, any of that stuff. No, it says the school name on it. I love that <laughs> stuff. I mean, keep it. Um, and I need to use it when it's pouring rain outside. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the ba- they thing- basically only give you weather related items. So your ass can stand outside. Yes. And then, um, the other big part of this is I don't have to have an afternoon homeroom. Oh. So there, yeah. So when I'm done teaching, uh, my normal schedule gets me done at 2.15. I don't have anything to do until 3.50. Do you ever go stand outside of your house in the age of Zoom <laughs> just to get that feeling of directing the traffic? <laughs> no, but you know, it's really funny. I don't even know if we mentioned this on here. My wife is the traffic director at her school too. <laughs> Do you guys ever talk about that? Like, we oh, talk you sh- wouldn't believe this car today. Uh. Oh, yeah, we talk shop about stuff. Well, in my my school is very, uh, there's only one way in and one way out. So it's a very orderly procedure. At my wife's school, it's a big parking lot. So, you know, she's had to contend with like people backing into each other or, you know, someone going really fast in the parking lot. My school the way we have to dismiss kindergarten through eighth grade all at one time. Well, not all at one time within 40 minutes, they all get dismissed. So, um, it's really, really, it's a slow moving train of cars. Uh, I've never out been out there and felt unsafe. Whereas my wife is like, Oh my God, somebody was running late today. And like, jump the line and like you know or they had a truck and they drove up on the lawn to go get the kids <laughs> <laughs> like that kind of shit i'm like holy jesus dude i i never have to deal with that because you know it's it's also i mean it's it's downtown so like if the traffic is pretty heavy out front of us anyway the the state house is only about a block away so um yeah there's nobody's going fast <laughs> <laughs> well my week is going all right work is extremely slow but it's o- it's going okay I'm still waiting on my promotion. I'm waiting for that to come through, so that'll be exciting. Um, Romy is back from Los Angeles, so I am no longer a single parent. Um, I'm actually at my apartment for the first time in a long time. It's uh, strange being back here. Like, it's just me. I'm used to having the family now, you know what I mean? Romy's not here, her kid, no cats. It's just me in this apartment. Do you feel like kind of liberated when you're away from them or is there like you go back and forth between like wow it's like all by myself and this is great and then there's the other part of like i miss having someone to be around here's how it works i leave her house sunday night to come home around 10 p.m and for about an hour it's exciting because i eat dark chocolate and play a bunch of video games and then i'm sad because i'm not with them but this after this recent two-week skirmish I wasn't happy at all. I didn't want to leave. And I think that's a very good sign, don't you? Oh, yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. And I actually, Keith got to text me the other day and ask me for math help. Yes. I was so excited. Yeah, like (laughs) we're sitting in Romy's room and she's doing her expenses to figure out that she's like, X is 20% of what? And I I, I like cracked my knuckles. I'm like, I got this. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> it was nice though because I was like, oh wait, I get to write an equation, I get to solve an equation, and then I sent it back to me. He's like, good, that's what Romy got too. Uh, yeah, she was working on it while you were working on it, and I, I was shocked. She must, she must actually be good with numbers because I was completely dumbfounded. I would have had to go on, on online and use some kind of thing, but she's like, oh, I got it. It's this, and then I read your answer. I was like, holy shit, good job. Yeah, no, that's not easy math. That for sure was uh, late stages algebra one. Oh, I'm finally getting my Hamptons vacation next week. Oh, dude, that's so awesome. I really want to go to the beach in the winter. I've yes, never been. That, I've me, never been to the beach in the winter. Me either. And Romy's friend has a house she rented, or uh, I don't know if she rents it or owns it or what, but it's sitting there unused. And she's like, you guys can go this week if you want to. This week meaning next week next week so at first of course i'm like uh no i was just gonna tell her no i was just gonna say like no i don't want to go but then i did the opposite and i was like no dude just go just go like it's during the week mostly who cares just go so uh, we're going and the best part is it is winter so i'll be at the beach but i can still sit inside I actually, you know, it's really funny that you bring this up. I was over at my mom's house on Saturday of last week and I was just helping her move some stuff and put Christmas decorations away. And I saw this set of keys laying there and it said this person's last name on it that I was like, oh, why do you have their keys? And she was like, oh, that's for the house down the shore. I was like, I know, but we don't rent that house until July. So why do you have them now? And she goes, because they said we could use it whenever we'd like. We could just have to, we just have to call ahead. So my immediate reaction before she was even done that sentence was, can I go there for my birthday? <laughs> and she's like, you know, I kind of felt bad there because at first, first split second, my mom had to think of when my birthday was. She's like, oh, so the third week of April. Yeah, I can ask. <laughs> I was like, hilarious. I was like, mom, you don't have to worry. I was like, I'm just teasing. She's like, no, 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 it'd be really good. She's like, you know, they have really strong Wi-Fi. She's like, you can even work down there for a couple days, maybe go down like Thursday, Friday, and then stay Saturday, Sunday. And I was like, that sounds incredible. Like, that sounds really fun. I'm interested. Have you ever been to the beach in a winter? No. And I, yeah. I'm not only am I going to the beach in winter, but the Hamptons in the winter. I imagine there's going to be a really nice view I want to walk on the beach a little bit. It, it's going to be exciting. Uh, so I'll be there Tuesday through Sunday morning. So nice. that's a, that's going to be a pretty long trip. I'm looking forward to that. And I got the original Nintendo restored. I tested it out today. It works. So get this. This is this is going to be kind of weird, but they to- they showed me how to clean out the games. Uh huh. So I I, I like. You know, and they say to use seventy percent alcohol. So I got a bottle of ninety percent rubbing alcohol, and poured it in a glass, and then poured some water in there to water it down. And yeah. then I got Q-tips, and I was like dipping the Q-tips in the alcohol, and I was like, "Uh oh, I know what this reminds me of." <laughs> <laughs> it was like this, this like you know, and I was thinking about my last days of getting high, and I isolated myself from everybody. I wasn't really talking to anybody anymore. I was just going to work and trying to save face. And I would come home and see how far I could get in Donkey Kong, the original. I, I was playing it on an NES emulator on my laptop. Because okay. did, you, did you ever see King of Kong? I did. I have seen that multiple times, actually. You know the... Uh, what is it? What is that last screen they get to if you like... If the you kills, get, kill screen. Yeah, I was like, I wonder if you can get to a kill screen... In the, in the console version. So I just kept playing and playing. and pl- I would sit up all night playing, playing. And that's all I did. And it, it just kind of flashed back to that. It was weird, man. You, go, you get down to like, your whole personality just changes. Like I had a brand new PS4 with games I hadn't even touched anymore. Like you, I had a brand new Apple Watch. I, I wasn't even wearing it anymore. I didn't charge it. I completely stopped listening to all music. It was just me and donkey kong and that dark basement and that's it it was a it was a strange scene it's weird how much you change you know it's a funny thing i just thought about this the other day i'm having my own very basement year oh <laughs> yes i'm literally living not living i i spend from seven o'clock in the morning till like 
four thirty or five o'clock at night in my basement. And it's like, this is the year I'm teaching from my basement. And I've been doing this since March of last year. And I'm like, I'm having my own very basement year without, you know, without all the other stuff. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, It's, and technically I live in a basement again now. And I have for since when, when did I move here? 2018. Like this is the bottom floor of the house. It's garden level, but it's a basement. So I just can't escape basements, I guess. Sorry, I'm having like a. I started coughing really bad and I muted myself. My bad. What happened? Uh, <clears throat> I honestly don't know. Do you ever breathe incorrectly? <laughs> no, but you you know you know in the movie Airplane when he's like, I have a drinking problem, and he just throws, <laughs> he throws the drink at his, in face. his face. Yeah, I I have a different. I drink wrong at least once a day. You know how you like kind of <laughs> yes. swallow it wrong and then yes. you almost die. <laughs> I do no, that at was- least once a day. It wasn't even that. I uh, just went to go take a breath in and I felt like I inhaled water and I couldn't, it, it was like this awful tickle and I just couldn't get rid of it. But um, what was I going to say about my week though? And it's, Oh, this week I'm off Thursday and Friday and then I'm off Monday for President's Day. So I have a five day weekend. I forgot about that. Yeah, dude. <laughs> like, we have off Monday. Yeah. Whoa. That's yeah, exciting super hyped about that and it's like it's such a a cool thing to like look forward to i'm like yes i don't have five days of like not teaching not being on google classroom all the stuff that goes along with just my daily routines i can kind of just get rid of them but the thing that bummed me out the most and ellie brought this up she goes daddy did you look at the forecast and i was like no she's like we're getting snow this week yeah, it's no, going to be a very snowy week, all week. And that means no skate park. Oh. Because it's not covered. It's just a big outdoor concrete park. So it's like, it's going to be a sloppy mess. You won't be able to skate. So I was like, oh, well, we'll just figure something out. We'll maybe, we'll go, you know, shovel out in the driveway. We can skate in the driveway. And she's like, I know. But Isn't it's that not dangerous? Uh, not really. I mean, it depends on how you do it. I, I'm the most part, like if I was like really desperate when I was younger, uh, at my mom's house, I would move the cars out of the garage and park them in the driveway. And then when the snow was completely done, I would pull the cars back in the garage. So I had like dry kind of concrete that didn't have any ice on it to skate. Well, I think it's great that your kid looks forward to it that much and that you have something you can share consistently because a lot of my youth, it was like, we say we're going to do things, but then we end up not doing them. And I'm not saying that to bitch and complain, really. I mean, we all had a rough upbringing. Me, my siblings, and my parents. My parents each worked two jobs, each Jesus. to provide for us and put us in Catholic school. So I'm sure a lot of the time they didn't have the money or were just too tired. But I don't know. As a kid, it's disappointing to be like for your parents to be like, hey, we're going to go do this, and then be like, hey, when are we doing that thing? Oh, yeah, we're not doing that. It's like, oh... Yeah, I I actually make a real conscious effort. Like when I promise we're going to do something, I don't say it unless I'm positive we're doing it. Yes, that's the because, way to do it. Yeah, because I I done that before where right before the pandemic started, uh, my daughters, uh, they had won a thing at school for, I, I actually forget exactly what it was for, for like citizenship or something like that. And they got a gift card to the place down the street from our house. That's kind of like a, you know, indoor trampoline kind of place. Yeah. And I was like, well, we'll go next weekend. Well, next weekend was March 13th. So. <laughs> oh, that's the place you mentioned before where every week they're like, can we go now? Yeah. They yeah. just go. And it's like, they, they only ask because they, we, we have gift cards for each of them to get in. And Do it's they like, understand that it's like, Nothing's open yet? Well, here's the thing. The place is open. Um, so why don't you go? I don't feel comfortable going there. Oh, wait, there. yeah. You can't go. You're at risk. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I, yeah, I, I don't know if we've ever talked about this on here. Because I don't have my spleen. No, we have. We talked about that. Yeah. I don't have my spleen, so my immune system's like really not great. Um, you but, know what? It wouldn't be good to bring the kids to a public place anyway like that indoors. I wouldn't do that. 
Yeah. So it's, it's also like, um, I, I don't know exactly how my, my wife looked it up the one day and she was like, it's, you have to basically make a reservation and it costs way more because they can only let a certain percentage of people in. And it's like, you know what, we'll just wait till everything's kind of back to like somewhat normal and then we'll go. Because right now in my head, I'm going like, those places are filthy normally. <laughs> like, <laughs> they're always kind of gross. And it's like, you know, I don't want to have to go there when, you know, being exposed to germs could potentially mean us being infected with COVID or something like that. You know what I just, You know what I, I liked I, a lot when I was younger that I would never, ever, ever do now, even if my kid was really disappointed? What? Water park. Ew. Okay. So you got to... St- quick one about that yes we got a gift card or not a gift card uh kelly's mom for christmas two years ago um got us uh a, like a hotel room and with the hotel room came the free admission to the water park Ooh. at i think it's it was camelback up in the poconos yes dude so gross It smells like the worst type of chlorine when you walk in. That's the exact smell I imagine. And a dirty, dingy locker room with big, fat, naked guys walking around. And, ugh. You know what really set me off was the girls were, the girls like it because they don't, they don't like the things that are, the one thing that kind of killed me is like, I don't want to go in the wave pool. I don't like the wave pool. You're too close to people. It's always like, there's always babies that are kind of like at the edge in diapers and shit. And it's like, no, this is just poop and pee. I'm not, I'm not swimming in this. Exactly. Um, uh, they like the, like the, they actually really like the water slides. And I was like, great, this is so great. And we went on the water slides and, the immediate second we were done i was like okay it's time to go and they were like okay let's go i ran back to the room and i turned on the shower as hot as it would go <laughs> like, <laughs> i couldn't i couldn't get away and i couldn't get in fast enough and i was like kelly's like uh we're gonna go get and i'm like you're not going anywhere no one's going anywhere until everyone showers everyone showering and the girls were like it's gonna take two i'm like you can shower together you're just <laughs> it, we're, everybody's showering you're scrubbing under your fingernails everybody's great The thing that set me off there, and this is (laughs) Kelly was like, you know, Kelly's usually like a good kind of like temper to me. She's always like, oh, you know, let's think about this. Like if I overreact to something, I typically, she'll typically kind of pull me back and vice versa. Right. But when we were walking out of the place, uh, we were going to go do, you know, they have like a towel return thing. And I went to go return my towel. (laughs) Kelly goes, as we're walking, she goes, Ooh, Evie, don't do that. And she was about to step and she pushed Evie out of the way to kind of like before she put her foot down, she was about to step on a band aid that was on the ground. Ew. And I, and I was just like, nope, 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 nope. We're leaving. We're done. And when did you next- learn how to shower right? I don't think I learned until at least a couple years ago. I wish someone would have sat down with like a notebook and a pad and really showed me. Because I don't think I cleaned behind my ears or my face or like. You know, I don't think I did a really good job until maybe my late 20s or early 30s. I I know this. When I moved in with my wife uh, into our apartment, I got, you know, for me in the shower, since I don't, like, I shave my head, like, every other day. Yeah. Um, the shower takes me five minutes tops, right? Like, I don't have to wash my hair or anything like that. I just scrub my body and I'm done. Yeah. And I came out of the shower and she was like, how do you go so quick? And I was like, well, you know, and I just kind of like rubbed around my chest and my arms and like, and she was like, how do you get to bottom of your feet? And I was like, you wash your feet. And she's like, yeah, I had to learn that too on my own. (laughs) I didn't know. I just thought, you know, the, the soap goes down there and kind of gets all over my feet. (laughs) So you just wash your torso. basically. (laughs) I just like, I literally just like, yeah, it's the top 60% of me gets washed. (laughs) That was about it. Like from the knees down, I was like, I don't fucking care. What are you, who's sniffing my, my shin bones? I don't give a fuck. Like, <laughs> but you know it's still really funny. I always think about this when I'm cutting my or like shaving. No one ever taught me how to shave. And <laughs> I fucking watched the YouTube video one day about like how you really should shave and I was like, "Yeah, I'm still doing it my way. I'm not doing this." Like it was like, "Get a hot towel. Use skin toner." Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, "Yeah, I'm just going to I'm just going to run the razor as hard as I can across my face and then be done." <laughs> I used to hold the Mach 3 upside down. And do that, which is crazy, because you get, like, a, a closer shave. But then I stopped doing that, 
And I would start the hot water thing because I have really sensitive skin. But now I don't shave anymore, so I don't have to worry about it. There you go. I actually, I, I switched over, I think it was probably about a year or so ago. Um, I got an electric razor and I just used that. Yeah. Uh, and then I, when I shave, I only, I shave my head with a, uh, the rate, like the regular razor, like the, you know, the Mach 3 one. But the last yeah. time I shaved with a razor, like everything was 2016. Jesus. <laughs> you probably look like Charles Manson right now. It's getting there. It's getting there. It's coming in good. All right. So, are you ready for this song parody? Oh my God, yes. I, can we say that Keith told me about this a week ago? Yeah. And it wouldn't tell. And I was like, well, let me hear it. And he's like, no, I want your real reaction. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> all right. Now, this came to me in a lightning strike, much like the tool impression that I did. <laughs> These ideas, they just come to me as if. Some otherworldly being just drops them into my head. So whenever that happens and it's good, I'm going to bring it to you all. So here we go, Tommy. This is the Beatles song parody. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, here we go. You say love. There you go. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of, you know what's fucking insane about that? I, if you would have put a list of 30 people in front of me and told me, guess who is singing this first part? I got you on the second. Like as soon as the, after the sitar interlude, I was like, yeah, that sounds like Keith. Yeah. The first one, not at all. <laughs> not even close, dude. I would have never put my, I would have been like, I don't know, maybe Vadim. I don't know. TJ, I don't fucking know. <laughs> like, yeah, I put some effects on that. Now, I, I was I was uh, inspired to make this because on our Twitter the other day, I posted that E-Town Concrete are better than the Beatles. And that tweet got a lot of action. And you know what? I, I honestly believe that. Like, there are more E-Town Concrete songs I enjoy than Beatles songs. And the Beatles aren't good. They're just not good. They're not good. Like, I'm sorry... If you inherited your parents' shitty taste in music, and you know this is this is like what you're clinging to, but it's time to grow up and go out and discover your your own thing. You know, do your own thing. It's it's stupid. It's outdated. It's dumb. You know what I searched to get the backing track for that last part? No. <laughs> Instrumental nursery rhymes for babies. <laughs> That's what the Beatles is. It's nursery rhymes. For grown-ups. Like, that, that's... Like, I had a roommate who was listening to the Beatles. It sounded like music you would hear in the Looney Tunes. Like, the music they would play when an elephant is walking across a tightrope or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's awful. It's awful. And I... Listen, I would... I would be willing not to take such a hard stance on this if people weren't so annoying at, about the Beatles. Like when you say you don't like them or it's not really your thing, people freak out and they're like, what? They invented punk rock. They invented air fryers. They invented <laughs> punk. They invented music. They, they invent. It's like, no, stop. They, one thing they did invent, which we should chastise them for, they invented the music industry. You know what really? I mean? Like, big record labels and the industry oh, part oh, of okay. it and the business yeah, yeah, yeah. side of it that fucks people over day after day. I think they probably had a big hand in inventing that because I don't know yeah. that music was such an industry before they existed. 
So they're definitely one of the first bands that I had heard of having like a big record contract. Yes. Like like millions of dollars type shit. Yeah. And then when was that? Uh, remember they Michael Jackson bought the Beatles Beatles catalog. Some of it, Did yeah. Yes, yeah, so it was only some of it. Yeah. I, I just remember hearing that, and it was like an absurd amount of money. I was like, "Fuck, dude! Like that's crazy." You know, it's really funny about with the what you did with it is the rhymes are so horrible <laughs> yeah it's like a that's real the, beatles song that, yeah i actually i really only i don't know a lot of the beatles stuff but i know i really like one song and it's not even i know it's the beatles but it's really it's just paul mccartney playing guitar or just uh guitar and paul mccartney singing it uh blackbird yeah i like that song a lot yeah i I got no problem with that song, but a lot of it is so stupid. And I mean, these guys couldn't even get along well enough to write one cohesive song. So you have like, this is John's part of the song. Now this is Paul's part. Like grow up and finish a fucking song together. How about, uh, E-Town Concrete has mandibles. Uh, yeah. Time to, time to shine. Yeah. Uh, punch the walls. Fuck you. (laughs) That, that song where he opens it up and they say the day is mine. The night, the night is, is also awesome. mine. That song is fucking. I'm not. I'm not being like ironic. That literally, Mandibles is better than any Beatles song. I, you know what? I kind of killed me. And this is like one of these things I've always cycled back to is when you when that kind of. Um, I don't want to call it like rap rock, but I can't think of another name for it. Like POD and that kind of like that type of music was really popular that like, you know, rock kind of mixed with like a, a hip hop kind of like flow. Yes. E town did that better than everybody. Yeah. And they were just weren't famous. And it, it kind of killed me because it was like, dude, you could put fucking the, the mandibles for sure. is one of those ones. I could have heard that YSP could have played that. Yes. I could have heard that on 94 one right after they fucking played stained and fucking, um, I don't know, with some other horse shit. Collective soul. Like, I don't know. Like I think it was like, too hard. If they if they would have got a big following and then got scouted by a major and then worked with a producer and put out some POD type of song, they could have been right there with all those other type of bands. But I doubt I don't know them at all, but I'm guessing that's not something they pursued. You know what's really funny is uh the guy who plays drums for E Town Concrete works in education. He is a assistant principal, I think, of a school in Jersey. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. I think it, someone mentioned that on this show before. So there was I just remember seeing it in a YouTube comment where uh, it, I forget what video it was for. I think it might have been their live one of the live sets from This Is Hardcore and one of the like, you know, somebody had liked it like 20 times. It was like, this guy's my, this guy's the assistant principal at my school. And the, all the comments were like, yeah, Mr. So-and-so fucking rules. Oh, that's <laughs> like, awesome. Isn't that crazy? I was like, damn, dude, that's fucking rad. I think you told that story on this show, actually. But I think I, yeah, I might just be repeating myself at this point. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. We're bound to do that. We're, you know, we only have so much information in our brains. But where do you stand on this whole Beatles thing? I mean, I've never been a Beatles fan, so I don't really care. I mean, if you said E Town Concrete or Beatles, I'm going to listen to fucking E Town every day. Okay. Like, that's, and I, 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 I just find the Beatles particularly annoying. And I, I think part of it dates back to eighth grade. I remember, I don't know, music came up, and these kids in the class were like, oh, the Beatles anthology is coming out. Like, uh, and I was like, so what? Like, aren't we supposed to be listening to like nirvana and silver chair and you know all the oh. fifth wave alternative shit that's out right now and then i remember we i was at this pool party like we graduated eighth grade and this kid had a pool party and had everyone over and the people were like let's listen to the beatles oh let's listen to the doors and i was like where the fuck am i so you know I, like it, again it's time to put down your parents shitty records grow up and go out and develop your own taste in music. Now I can kind of see what you're talking about with this. I hate the doors. Yes. I hate the doors so much. And I, 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 you know, when I bought my car, I bought my, uh, my Honda, I bought it used, but it was like only a year and a half old. Yeah. And I, I got in it and I test drove it and I was like, this is great. And they're like, all right, we're going to do the final detailing on it. We'll go and get the paperwork done. And I got in the car and I was like, this is fucking awesome. I'm like driving off the lot. And I pressed the button to turn the radio on and 
it didn't go on the radio. It went onto the CD player. And guess what CD was in my fucking uh, car when I bought it? The best of the doors. Ugh. And it was like halfway through. I don't, it, I, I, I only know the one line from the song. I guess the song's called Whiskey Bar. Take me to another whiskey bar. <laughs> and I literally ejected the CD and flung it out the window on Route 1. <laughs> That's a that's like the doors are bad, but that that's a particularly bad song. And they play it a lot, dude. If you turn on fucking one oh two nine, like they fucking play like the classic rock stations play a lot of doors. I'm like, this is this stinks. Like it's lame music. I never liked most of it. Not all of it, most of it. And I wouldn't listen to the classic rock stations if my C D player was busted or I didn't have one. There was a uh, jazz station. I think it was I can't remember. W R T I maybe. And then okay. there was ninety one point seven, the Princeton station, which would play a lot of good stuff. I would I would listen to one of those. I I think my biggest thing with the doors is like people always go like, listen to the words, man. It's like, okay, here's my <laughs> thing. Fuck I, I don't I, I was an English major in college. I read enormous amounts of poetry. Yes. 99% of it is fucking garbage. It's pretentious. It's people assigning value to things that they think makes them smarter. Yeah, man. Coleridge said that because he was thinking about the, and fuck you. You don't know. This guy's been dead for 110 <laughs> years. Fuck off. Second of all, well, not 110 years, not Coleridge, but whatever. Like you get the idea. Like people think it makes them sound smart if they kind of like co-op someone like oh yeah dude i really like that really do you like when you're by yourself and you have nothing else to do are you gonna pick up a fucking poetry book and read it fuck that like i i've never read poetry with the sole exception of like maybe three poems in my entire life where i've gone that actually meant something i like that there are certain things where it's so hard to be good you know what i mean like poetry oh, yeah. is one of those like there are so, there are so, I don't read a lot of poetry, but once in a while I come across one and I'm like, holy shit, that's good. And I, I think that's rare, but that's just me. I'm not in the poetry community. And another one is a guy playing an acoustic guitar. Like whenever I'm flipping through Instagram and I see someone singing and playing an acoustic guitar, I'm like, Ugh! and I just like keep going. <laughs> but like, It's like you saw a ghost. You're yeah. Like, but, <laughs> but then you have like Bob, is Bob Dylan the big acoustic guy? Yeah. Then, but then you have someone like Bob Dylan. Now, I've never listened to Bob Dylan, but I, I think he's like big in that world. You know, it's just like that's one of those things where it's hard to do it and actually be good and taken seriously. I think my, I, I, I think you kind of hit on something with this is that there are certain things in this world that are extraordinarily difficult to do, and the big key exception I think is is that regardless of your experience with something. So maybe you've never read poetry before, but sometimes you read a poem and go, that's good. Yes. It's the same thing with art. I went to um, the Philadelphia Museum of Art, and I remember looking around going like, that's a beautiful painting. Like it looks like the thing it looks, it's supposed to look like, Oh, this is an archduke from the 1400s. Cool. It looks like that dude. And he's got a feather in his cap. Fucking right, man. Like that's, that's all, right on that. Like, it looks like the guy's face. Right. Then you get into like these things, like, like the modern art stuff. I'm like, who told you that this was good? Because I look at this and I see a series of geometric shapes and a lot of times people go, oh, because you don't know. And it's like, all right, well, let me in the club, dick. Like, <laughs> s like you are able to see something that I'm not able to. Explain it to me. The only time I've ever been impressed with art was, do you remember that thing? So, I don't know if you ever took the field trip there. Do you remember that place? It was called the Barnes Foundation. Yes. I, I don't know if my, any of my schools ever went there, though. I went in, I think, ninth or 10th grade, and then uh, they moved it down to, like, it's in Center City now. Or not Center City, but it was, yeah, no, it is Center City. Yeah, they moved the whole thing. There's a documentary about how they went around that guy's will and moved the whole thing to the art yeah. museum or something. They teach you how to look at art, and they put pieces of art next to each other that have relationships or 
you know, juxtapositions like, oh, this is different than that because of this, you know, method of using, you know, or the way this person uses paint or the way this person uses texture. So it, it, somebody explained it to me and I was like, okay, I see the value in this. Whereas I look at some paintings that are like, this is worth $80 million. And I'm like, are you sure though? Like, are you really sure? Like it's worth that much money? Because I know it's basically, it comes down to what are people willing to pay for it? Yeah. Because, but I've looked at paintings before and gone, I don't get it. But the first time I saw, what was the, um, that street artist Banksy, the first time I saw that, uh, Banksy one with, uh, you know, the guy, he's like a punk rocker throwing a Molotov cocktail, yeah. but instead of throwing a Molotov cocktail, he has a flower, yeah. but he has like a floral arrangement in his hand. I was like, that's smart. That's clever, but smart and clever in the way that like a, a really well-written far side comic is. <laughs> like I, I look at them at the same like they're the same value to me but people are like yeah this painting's worth x amount of dollars and you're like okay if you say it is i'm, I'm not gonna sit there and call you a liar but at the same time like i don't see the value in stuff like that and i think that really goes a lot with like the like we're going going back to the original point of like the beatles the doors like i, I just don't get it art is, is it. just very subjective and who is to say why people like things and why they don't i don't know it's uh yeah it's like when i would listen to the jazz station a lot of jazz sounds alike there's no debating that but once in a while a song would really catch my ear and i'd be like wow what is this and then afterwards the announcer would be like oh that's miles davis or oh that you know that's charlie parker and i'd be like oh i guess that's why they're the best (laughs) yeah yeah like i i remember in a movie they used uh i think it's miles davis favorite things you know like and i was like oh that's really cool i liked it and i enjoyed it but then i've heard other things from jazz and i'm like i don't i don't understand this and they're like you have to listen to the notes they're not playing and i'm like (laughs) all right it's like no i don't i yeah how about this how about i fucking put on e-town concrete and fucking (laughs) start dancing all over the fucking place (laughs) Start throwing elbows and fucking spin kicks at people. <laughs> so, E-Town Concrete Good, Beatles Bad. That is what we are establishing on the show today. Oh, I, I'm so glad I wrote this down. Uh, I wrote the word down, Twitter. <laughs> you said that you wrote something about E-Town Concrete on Twitter, and you're like, it got some traction. Explain Twitter to me in a way that somebody that doesn't know Twitter, like when you say it got traction, like, does that mean like people shared it? Did it get like, does it get likes like on Instagram? How does it work? It got like three, it got three retweets and maybe seven likes. And for, for our Twitter account, that's a lot of traction. Okay. Yeah. Cause we don't have that many followers. So listen, if you listen to our show and you don't follow us on Twitter, follow us. The N E scene. We want to get up to 200 baby. Do I follow you with one of my three accounts I have? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> That's like a constant thing. I just like make a new account. And I'm like, all right, somebody said something was cool on Twitter. And then I go and do it. And I'm like, this is too confusing. I'm not doing this. While we're here, I want to give a shout out to, hold on a sec. Oh yeah. Shout out to Pratik S, a listener of ours. Tommy, I accidentally left your last name in the last episode of the show. And oh, Prat- yeah. Pratik pointed it out to me. He's like, hey, you left Tommy's last name in. So I went back in and took it out. Pratik, you're the, you're the person. I didn't want to say man or well. I don't know what your name is. <laughs> I don't know. But thank you so much. You may have just saved my career. Yes. So if you hear our last names in the show, let us know. We want to take it out. And if you tag us on uh, Instagram, just tag the NE scene. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Don't tag us. Because uh, we don't want to get fired. We don't know if this show would actually get us fired, but we don't want to. I don't think so. I don't think we've said any. The only thing I mean, I, anybody would take any issue with is we've said, you know, like we curse. Like, it's like, you know, I, I was talking about this with the music teacher the other day at my school. And he was like, I forgot I was unmuted and I uh, spilled my coffee. And he's like, I don't remember exactly what I said. He's like, but it definitely involved fucking shit. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, the kids didn't even, they acknowledge, like, they kind of were like, yo, Mr. So-and-so, you're on mute or you're off mute. And he was like, oh, okay, my bad. And they all kind of chuckled and that was it. And they moved on because sixth grade's kind of like at that point where they're like, we've heard these words before. It's not like 
you know, third graders where like it, it, I said something in front of my daughters the other day and they both looked at me and they were like, Ooh, ooh you said a bad word, daddy. And I was like, Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> but like, he's like, you know, um, you say things when you think you're unmute, you think you're muted and you, you don't know that. And I did, I did it the other day. Wednesday, the girls came home. They had gone to visit my in-laws up in the Poconos. Cause they were like, we want to get like a lot of snow and they got two feet up there. So they went up there and played in the snow for a few days and did their virtual school from uh, my in-laws house and came home on Wednesday. And when they came home on Wednesday, they had school, but they had a two hour delay. So they didn't have to start school until much later. So I was teaching my first two day or two classes of the day. So Evelyn walked down the steps and they had just come in from playing outside in the snow and I thought I was muted because they were all working silently. And I looked up the steps as she was coming downstairs to get a drink. And I was like, what are you doing? And she was like coming downstairs to get a drink. And I was like, why are you walking around in your underwear? (laughs) And all the kids were like, Mr. Doherty, you're not muted. I'm like, I'm really sorry. And I go to hit mute. And before I can go to hit mute, Evie goes, well, I came inside and my butt's all sweaty. So I said, mommy said, I don't have to wear pants. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like Jesus Christ. <laughs> like <laughs> as I'm hitting the mute button, I could see the kids like starting to lift their heads up and like look at the camera and start laughing. I was like, all right, well, you just made my classes day. <laughs> Good luck. The joys of working from home. I'm going to tell a story now. It, uh, I don't know if I should. All right. All right, here, I'm going to put in a disclaimer, wink, wink to the audience. At at another job I worked, uh, I was really messed up one day. And this is, this is, okay. So so at at another job I worked, I was really messed up one day. And I fell asleep for two big meetings in one day. Like, I missed one, and I woke up to all these phone calls, where are you? And then I think I missed another one, or I slept through both. I can't remember. And then that same night, an organizational announcement went out uh, for th- that someone got a promotion, and it was someone I knew, and I replied all to the whole company. <laughs> and I was like, congrats. <laughs> like, that that was a rough day. I actually, <sighs> I get really mad now with, like, because we are home all day and we're in the mindset of that we're at home. Yes. It is hard to kind of separate work from home and it's yeah. one has bled into the other and it's like, there's days where I'm like not in front of my computer, but I'm doing something work related for like 12 hours. And it's like, I feel like I know that it, being a teacher is a very important job. And what we do provides a fundamental service, but I have to be able to disconnect sometimes. Yes. So I've started putting on my phone, like if I get a text message after nine o'clock, I don't answer it to the next day. Whereas the first like probably five or six months of this pandemic, I was answering emails at like kids would email because, you know, sixth grade kids, like they stay up all night for some reason. I don't know what these kids are doing, but they're like, they'll email me at like two o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, I would get the email and it would go off and bling. And I'd be like, oh, okay. And I'd look at my phone and glance at it and be like, oh, I can answer this in one sentence. And then I would try to go back to sleep. And then I would think about other stuff I had to do. And it's like, it's, it's slowly bleeding into, I don't have a personal life. And I was like, nope. I'm not a fucking heart surgeon. I'm not constantly on call. Like I, I teach kids ratios and proportions and how to change fractions and the decimals. Like this isn't fucking life and death. They can, their email can wait till eight o'clock the next morning. You Um, know what I do now as a result of the pandemic? What's that? I don't zip up my pants anymore. At all. Yeah. I don't know how it happened or why, but that's something that's going on now. You button them. You just don't zip them. Yeah. Yeah. I've actually found that pretty, you know what? I wear jeans to work every day because they can only see me from the waist up. Yeah. And I have, I actually have noticed that my fly is down a significant amount more than it is now. Yeah. What is that? Past. Why? Is it a lazy thing or I'm home or? Yeah. It's a thing that I, I, I don't really have to be in public. So that's probably like falls to the back of my concerns. And then I think it is also coupled with like, 
I'm at home. Like there's a laziness that goes along with it. It's like the same reason. And like when I get up on Saturday mornings and then come back from the skate park, I immediately change into sweatpants. Like, oh, yeah. Like, you know, like it's not about me being like, you know, the old Seinfeld thing, like sweatpants tells the world you gave up. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. uh, I I think of it as like, no, I got up early today and I did a bunch of exercise. This is, I earned this and I'm going to relax. Like I'm going to spend my Saturday doing what I want. You know what else? I, Romy has this rule where you can't wear jeans in bed. Like no outside pants in the bedroom. Oh my, I have that. Yeah. So, so I'm in pajama pants a lot. Okay. So maybe, maybe that's a contributing factor too. I grew up with that. My mother was big on that. See, I don't when like you, that. Yeah, when you came in from being outside and you went into your room, you changed your clothes. Really? Like outside outside clothes were not allowed on the bed. Because like what if you were at the park and I sat and spit and now it's all over my fucking covers because I sat in it. Deal with Do you it. know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Look, we're down to the wire here, so I just want to say a couple things. Continue to write us, continue to listen to us, follow us on Instagram and Twitter the any scene and look we've got more good guests coming up i've i've got a couple i've got like three in the works uh i've i've reached out to a bunch more i'm waiting to hear back from folks it's happening it's going to be happening every week we're going to be talking to more of your favorite artists we're going to be talking to more of our friends we're going to be talking to each other we're going to be here every week that's it tommy why don't you take us out with some some encouraging words Hold on, I screenshotted something the other day and I was like, this is a great thing to talk about. Hold on, I got to find it on my phone. Just give me a second. Okay, so this is a, a quote from uh, the late, great stand-up comedian Patrice O'Neill. Uh, yes. He said, uh, there's people who love living lies. I was thinking about this the other day. Brutal honesty is such a dumb term. The word brutal should be associated with lying, like you're a brutal liar as opposed to someone who's just going to inform you of the truth they believe. And I constantly think of that when I go to tell somebody things because I noticed a a verbal crutch I use when I deliver either criticism or feedback about something is I say, well, to be honest, it's like, you should always be honest. You should always trying to be speaking your truth or speaking whatever you think is the most important part of it. And I've kind of gotten to the point where I deal with a lot of people at work in social and professional situations where my overt kind of in your face, like, I don't, I don't give a fuck. I'm telling you what I think. Um, has kind of uh, what I thought would initially be something that would backfire and something that would be like harmful to my career has now been something that people are like, well, ask Tommy, see what he thinks <laughs> because they know that what they're going to get from me is going to be like fairly unfiltered. I'm not going to sit there and hurt people's feelings on purpose. I can, I can read a room. I understand what's appropriate and what's not, but, um, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not feeling very encouraged. We started out good. But okay. Th- but then but then I lost you. All right, let me start again. <laughs> let me think. I mean, I don't think force that- it. Don't yeah, if you have to think, then it's not a thing. Okay. Well, this is one that my my sister sent to me the other day and I thought was great. Food is the most abused anxiety drug and exercise is the most underused antidepressant. There you go. That's it. Things that are difficult, we don't want to do. Things that are easy are easy for a reason, but they don't fulfill us. So do the right thing. Well, that's it, folks. We'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And until next time.